In 2017, the Resinosa Ensemble approached composer John Newell, based in Eastport, Maine, to commission a song cycle for a Prelude to a Dream concert series. The result is seven breathtakingly beautiful poems by Sarah Teasdale, set to music in the most compelling way. To quote composer John Newell, the poems in this set address a variety of emotions, a warm reminiscence of evenings spent in New York's Riverside Park, the innocence of a child running to her neighbor's house accompanied by the moon. Ultimately, the night and the stars seem to have become sources of solace and objects of adoration. The final poem, Winter Stars, was apparently written during the First World War. It is a pay-in to the faithful beauty of the stars that still holds forth through the sorrow that she feels for the young blood flowing beyond the sea. For this concert, we'll be performing two of the seven titles, Summer Night, Riverside, and the aforementioned Winter Stars.
to banish to my spirit's wings. With the help of the Maine Arts Commission grant, we initiated our most challenging program yet by commissioning works from three different Maine composers for our 2019 concert series titled American Reflections. We were longtime fans of Don Sonnenberg's work and were ecstatic to finally have the opportunity to collaborate with him. He wrote for us six songs on text by Edna St. Vincent Millay. The song cycled, titled Beauty Is Not Enough, had its world premiere at USM on September 29th, 2019. To quote composer Dan Sonnenberg, when Resonos Ensemble contacted me about commissioning a song cycle, they said that the theme for the year was American poetry, which sounds appropriate enough for most composers of art songs. I knew if I were to concentrate exclusively on poetry, I would have to find a poet who captivated me thoroughly and whose words I could easily imagine. Edna St. Vincent Millay's irreverence, directness, progressive feminism, and refusal to be ordinary or predictable was visceral and exciting to me. And her place as a beloved Maine na native born in Rockland made her a natural pick for this Maine-based project. The opening song, Burial, may be the happiest song ever sung about one's own death. And there is a kind of delight in the amorous frustration expressed in, uh, by the narrator of song three, Witch Wife. The centerpiece and longest song, Recuerdo, is in many ways the simplest. A purely nostalgic glance backward at bohemian youthful adventure and empathy. It receives the most straightforward setting as well and perhaps the closest thing to a real lead I shall ever write.
Although born in New York City, composer Nancy Gunn has made Maine her home, in part for her love of the ocean in Maine's beautiful coastline. This affinity for long walks on the beach is partly the reason why she chose these three maritime poems by Elizabeth Spires to set to music. The third composition, The Sound of the Sea at the Shore, serves as a bookend of sorts to the more youthful two settings as almost 25 years separate each compositions. To quote Nancy Gunn, poems, like music, are essentially unparaphrasable. We take in what a poem means in the same way we hear the ocean's roar in a seashell or feel the shape of a stone in our hand. Nevertheless, by slowing down and listening, really listening, we can go beyond the yes and no answers that we often seek to a deeper understanding of the moment or the poem that we're in. Oh, my children, my 
A true Renaissance man, composer and guitarist Richard Nelson is recognized for his skillful and original integration of contemporary classical and jazz compositions. Richard Nelson was generous enough to set to music for us three poems by Maine poet Ellen Taylor. To quote composer Richard Nelson, I was delighted when the Resinosa trio approached me about composing a piece for them, and equally thrilled to be able to work with poetry by my friend and colleague, Ellen Taylor. A forest of glass, a kaleidoscope, a dream, is the result of this happy confluence of energies. Taking these three poems as a group, though, I soon saw that each poem brought forth unique and tender about our shared experience of being human. And each did so in evoking a distinct aspect of the strongly flavored, starkly contrasting seasons here in Maine. This common trait helped me develop an overall shape for the three song set, even as each song projects its own distinct character. After a murky path through fall and the crystalline clarity of winter, this three song cycle concludes with a welcome, hope infused spring rebirth finding a clear and simpler voice in Song to the Fog.
drapes over balsam tears. Oh, the lilacs coming to life. Oh, the swelling blueberry bushes. I climb up. Thank you.